Hi, welcome to the how-to series on Triton tools. Um, you can see a lot of orange and black tools here because I own a lot of orange and black tools. Uh, I'm not going to give you uh, any kind of guidance on the cordless stuff. That's all pretty much point and shoot, you know, pick it up, set it the right direction, put a drill bit in, make a hole, drive a screw, kind of, people know how to do that stuff. The stuff that's difficult to do is the, and understand it in terms of setup and, and do it accurately and efficiently are things like the bevel guide on the whetstone sharpener. This this took me like an hour to figure out how to use from the instruction manual. Maybe I'm daft. Maybe instruction manuals aren't written very well. Maybe that's what it is, but I want to take you through things like, like how to set that up accurately uh, and get it used uh, properly, or start using it properly rather, and, and make a really nice honed sharp chisel, uh, or or even your, your plane. Ooh. Concave, not convex. That all screws some people's heads. Uh, things like the track saw, the down jig, and the precision saws. I've got both the precision saws, the, the old school one and the new school one. Things like the the, the router slash uh, table saw table, the work center to 2000, uh, and the miter, the miter saw. I've got the big 305 mil saw. Sorry, that's what, what 12 inch blade, I think, um, for our uh, imperial friends. Uh, also, things like the uh, the spindle sander, just setting them up, making sure you've got them set up right, and then, then how to use them. So let's not delay any further, and let's get into the first tool I want to look at, which is the uh, the sharpening stone, whetstone sharpener. This thing is this thing is amazing. Anyway, come closer and let's let's do it. So this is pretty much how you pull it out of the box. You get a crossbar, you get the uh, the piece holder, chisel holder, blade holder. You get a size 19 wrench spanner take your pick and you get a stone flattener that's what this is uh, as a rough and a smooth side this isn't actually for like hand sharpening your blades this is to ensure that the the stone itself is is sharp you get a tube of uh of toothpaste or metal polish depending on what your teeth are made of and you get a big ass wheel of stone which is actually full of, of diamond particles anyway the um the beginning procedure is to remove this nut Try and do that so you can see. Remove that nut. Oh, I'm going the wrong way because it's counter, you know, uh, the normal way. Remove one of these metal washers. Then take your stone um, label out and slide it on. Once it's slid on, replace the washer. Again with the, uh, where's the, the cupped side? That goes down. You don't want a lot of, flat pressure here you want the the ring of pressure to be on then take your washer and and spin it yeah, sorry not your washer your nut the opposite direction to what you think <laughs> which is always very frustrating because you always want to spin it the correct way that doesn't work now when you've got it on uh, put your hand on the other side I'll just rotate this around so you can see what I'm doing and hold hold this nut here because that actually Holds the other end of the of the of the nut, as you can see there, because this shaft runs all the way through the middle and it spins both wheels at the same time, much like any good old grinder. Now you've got to remember to spin it the opposite direction and give it a bit of a pull so that it's tight, and just hold it still, retighten the other end, just hand tight is all you really need. Um, and now you've got the beginnings uh, of a go. Take your water. It is a yeah, it's just a water reservoir. Um, fold it up underneath and put it on. I typically put it on the highest of the two water levels, but the water, lowest one will probably work while the stone is big. Just hook that on there. Then take your crossbar and put it in the back set. Put it up fairly high to start. Put it on the back set, and then you'll be adjusting that a fair bit um, regularly as you learn what this machine can do. So put it up fairly high. Then I've bothered to prepare myself with a large amount of water. So go get yourself some water and just fill the reservoir up to the full mark, which is actually indented. So make sure you look for it and fill up to that full mark. And once you're at the full mark and you start operating this machine, you'll need to fill the reservoir up again because the stone itself is very thirsty and it sucks up quite a lot of liquid. So when you're operating, just have that 
there and, and you'll fill it up again. The other thing you'll need the reservoir, the extra water for, is to wet the sides down. The sides won't stay wet all the time uh, because it's quite a thirsty stone and because it's quite porous, the, the water will run uh, back into the reservoir um, or stay in the top edge of the stone. And you'll notice your stone is probably very wet around the top edge, this like top third, but it's very dry in the middle. Now mine's very wet because I've taken the time to to get a lot of water in this um, and keep it moist. But you might want to take your your you know um, water reservoir and just just top it up there. Don't do too much because if you have too much in the reservoir, then you get a large puddle of water coming back at you, which you might see momentarily. Now the next thing you do is you put your bleed jig uh, on. Now you want to sharpen a tool. Now I just so happen to have some brand newies here uh, that I was given uh, that need a sharpening because they're not polished, they're not sharp enough. Let's just grab the big one. Now it's worth noting this tool is not for old hackers. It is not for old hackers. And what I mean by old hackers, so I'll go get you one. One isn't too bad to be honest. And it already has a, a concave um, to it. This one, it's been sharpened in the traditional manner. You can see it's got a convex shape to the blade, which means it, it, it curves around this way on the on the back of the blade. I don't know if that's gonna show up, but you can see that. Whereas this one has clearly been machine sharpened before because it has an indented uh, sharpening surface. Now, if you're nasty big in your uh, hand tools and you like to sharpen by hand, this is not the machine for you. Just saying, not the machine for you. You're going to enjoy your wet stones and your, uh, you know, your Veritas or Lee Nielsen jig, etc. Blah blah blah, um, and you're going to have a great time with that. Uh, so you know, enjoy. Um, now, on the jig, uh, you'll notice. I'll just take this, the chisel out. You have uh, two, two little nubs, one on each side of the jig. These are here to help keep the chisel aligned and flat. Or your planer blade. You can do planer blades in this quite easily. It's easily large enough. So put it in. Make sure it's snug, very snug fit up against the end. Tighten this end first, the top end first, and then tighten the second end. And that just make, brings it down nice and firm. And just make sure that on the back here, that it's nice and flush on both sides with the uh, with the metal. Now, you'll notice that I've got it so that the, the blade is here. The nub is here, and then the two two pieces that mount on the crossbar are over here. Okay, so now it's time for some sharpening. So we put it on so that the blade is pointing towards us and comes down like this. Now, here's the interesting part, how to use the, the bevel guide or bevel gauge. Take your pick. A couple of things about this. Oh, it's a bit reflective. Uh, it has a bunch of inch measurements down on the right here has a bunch of millimeter measurements on the left here. The inch measurements on the right, they are the size of the stone, much like the millimeter ones. And you'll notice that the millimeters match the inches. So this is for the people who, who live in the world of metric and this is for those in Imperial. And what you want to do is set your little black arrow according to the size of the stone. At this particular point, the, si the, si the size of the stone is at its full size. So we're just gonna push it all the way up there. Now the next thing you need to do is measure your your angle of your blade. So you want to find which one it fits in, because it might have a pre-existing bevel you want to maintain, and so you can measure that. This one is, is playing on 35, it's sticking pretty hard on 30, 25 seems best. 20 is a bit, oh, could be 20. No, too tight. So 25 looks about right for this particular blade. But because this is an old, concave, it's been hand sharpened a lot, and I know that because I probably did it. You can see this section here, the blade is shiny. That's because I've tried to do this at least once on this machine. I looked at it and I went, no, this is going to take a long time to do. So for old blades like this, where you're going to want to try and use a machine, uh, that's going to take a long time to do. You're going to spend a lot of time on this machine grinding that out because this is not a quick process. It's a very relaxing process, but it is not quick. Um, unless it's a, a pre-existing bevel, on a pre-existing chisel. So this is a brand new one. I've not actually used this one, I don't think. So let's just quickly measure up. Play in 30. I tend to put it in and then wiggle it and see if it's got play. So this one seems to actually have 
a 20 degree. Is it 20 or 25? Oh, it feels like 20 to me. Once it's in there, it feels like 20. So it's one, it wants to be at 20. So what we do is we then take the gauge. I don't know if you can see this. And we set it to 20. So undo the little screw, set it to 20. Now this is the fun part about this gauge. So once our chisel is in, and again, bevel on the underside, hard against the nubs, push it down so it's about two or three fingers, two and a half fingers out. Um, that way you get enough play uh, in the adjustment. If you go too narrow, then you're gonna start rubbing the bottom of your, uh, of your, of your blade holding jig. So now that's in. We put it in, and I just like to initially check by eye if I'm on the bevel, which I'm I'm way high at the moment. So, okay, so here we are now. I don't know if you can quite see this in this lighting, but the very front edge of the blade here is touching, whereas the back the back is not touching the stone. So I just tend to get my head in here and have a look at the back and just do some some adjustment, just so it looks until like most of the blade is touching. And that's, that's when I think I've got my, my bevel. Now this is where the cool gauge comes in. So what you do is you put the gauge on the wheel, anywhere on the wheel should be fine, and then you touch it to the blade. Now, if you look, I don't know if you can quite see that from the amount of light, but as I touch down, you can see that the, yep, you can see there that the gauge still has light shining through it. It's not 100% flat. So this gauge is telling me that we want a 20 degree edge on this blade because that's what the, the gauge told us it was. So if we want that 20 degree edge, which I'm just gonna double check is set 100% correct. If we want that 20 degree edge, yep, still a big amount of light shining through. Let's just, see there? we need to adjust that some more. So because the top shoulder is touching and the bottom isn't, we need to lower the blade so that it's on more of this angle. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. One, two, three. Loosen that. Then I'm gonna check again. Now you can see there, the light has gotten thinner at the end of the tongue, but still not quite, quite there, so another little Turn of the knob. I'm checking again, we're getting really close. If you just check the middle issue of the blade, that's about 25 degrees. So there, it's flush with the blade. The middle is pretty good. Has very little light behind it. At the top, there's none. Right down the very bottom, there's a little bit, but I'm pretty sure we'll be fine if we cut that into this chisel. All right, so let's get underway with the enjoyable process of, of sharpening this. All right, so now we've got our blade on the right angle. Our gauge agrees that we're on the right angle and that we're gonna make the right sort of bevel for this chisel. And now what we need to do is, well, turn it on. Don't have the blade on when you turn it on, just lean the blade back a bit, push in the green button, which is hiding on the back. And you can see now the water is running up this. And when we put it down onto the plate, you see the water jumps up onto the blade. Now don't leave it in one spot or you wear unevenly. You need to run across backwards and forwards. Now the good thing about this is it's nice and quiet. So you can chisel at night while the children are asleep or while your wife thinks you're out the back playing computer games. Instead you're secretly chiseling away and you just keep this going. And we're just going to do this for about a minute and I'll show you the effect of that on the back of the blade. And you will be able to see it, it'll be quite apparent. And the reason you run back and forth is to keep the wear even, keep it nice and smooth. All right, I'm gonna just have a quick squidge on the back. Okay, now you should be able to see. Oh, I'll come up a bit closer. Now, if you can see, it's just starting to wear here. Yeah, you can see it on that angle there. See, see this is starting to wear here. Now that'll eventually go the whole way across, removing nice 
small amounts of material, and away we go. So I'm going to do this, and once I've got that edge done, I'll bring you back for doing the the other side of the chisel. I don't think you want to watch five minutes of me doing this crap. Now it's important with this machine to uh, smooth the operation back and forth. Don't apply too much pressure down onto the blade. You'll feel that just slows the motor down. And if uh, the mo if the if it isn't spinning, uh, you can tighten up the tension by twisting this knob here in that direction, or you can loosen it if you feel it's if it's not slowing down at all. If you apply any pressure, the idea is to just have it at a good constant speed, just continually going there and. Taking that uh, that metal down to a nice nice finish, which we'll polish here in a moment. All right, so I'm just looking at that. And that's all clean now. See that that's clean all the way down to the base of the the bevel on that. On that. It's nice and nice and clean all the way across. Now what we need to do is is do the back of the blade. So to do the back of the blade, we we merely remove it from this. Bevel guy. Just gonna clean off some crap that's on the side of the blade there, on the base. Now, what we need to do is polish the base of this blade. So I'm gonna just remove this guide from the back, put it in the front, because this is the way we sharpen the blade. Sharpen the blade. Sharpen the blade. So what we're gonna do here is now you might need to wet the side of yours. Mine's fairly moist because. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, right, mine's had a lot of water. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to hold this flat on the side. You need to hold it as flat as you can. Try not to sit back here and let the blade like get off the edge uh, of it. Uh, you want to stick it in and you want to keep it um, just back and forth in small motions. Uh, just keeping it flat as possible and letting the, the wheel do the work for you. Don't push too hard, just let the wheel do the work for you. So let's go back on with the button on the back. Now the idea is not to don't also don't come in on an angle like this to the wheel. Come in on an angle like that to the wheel and get to flat. If you go this way, you're going to try and put a, a bevel on the on the flat of your chisel, and you don't want that. So I need to come in here and work it back and forth. Also try and keep the whole plate of the chisel even on the side there. Uh, try not to let the bottom or the top get too much grip. Try and keep it as flat against that as possible. Now it's mostly the first little piece of the chisel that you want to get shiny. You're not really too worried about the rest of the underneath. I mean, of course, you know, the nicer the better, of course, all over. But it's really only the first, you know, two or so centimetres you know, that are doing the work. Now it is best, you probably see I've got this on a, um, on a bed that catches excess water. Well, you can already see that it's, uh, you can see that clearly. That haze there is the uh, the original make, or probably a half hack sharpening. And you can see the smooth, shiny bit there. There's also a bit of a, a bit of a haze on the end of the blade there. I'm not sure if that's visible in the, uh, oh, it is visible there, you can see a haze there. So we've, we've gotten rid of some of this. This is a hollow, that's fine. We don't care about a hollow being in the chisel. It's gonna be quite, quite advantageous. What we wanna do is get that front edge and as much of this chisel body uh, as as even as possible. Again, if it's haze, don't worry about that. So long as the majority of the, the edge of the chisel and that sort of area around there is, is getting shiny and bothered to care about. I can feel a burr on the back there because you're gonna get a burr when you're sharpening like this. It's only when you uh, sharpen like that that it takes the burr away. Now what we need to do is do the final step, which is to take it over to the, uh, to the buffing wheel and give it a go. So just dry off your blade. Just gonna scratch up a bit of the excess from last time. Now they give you a nice um, metal polishing compound. Now you can use that if you want, or you can um, use buffing compound, uh, which is a lovely green color. That's more your preference. I've used this uh, metal polishing compound. Seems to do quite a good job. Now I, um, I put this over here in case I want to use it, but normally I just end up doing most of my work up here and using this as a hand rest myself. Um, so let's just get a bit of 
bit of something on this blade. You want to hold it at a pretty consistent angle, trying not to keel it, not to go over the top on the front. Just gently working the blade, turn it around, have a look. Oh wow, that's shiny, it's so shiny. I don't know if you can see quite how shiny that is, it's quite a mirror finish already. You can see just how shiny that bit of the blade is compared to the rest of it. It is amazingly shiny. I might just oh smear that a bit. Let's just give it another go. Yeah that's 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 quite shiny. I would I would happily happily wear that. All right, now I'm going to do the back of the blade. I'm just going to put a little more of this on here, just because it's easier to do it while it's spinning. If you've got a polishing compound, often you can just, it comes in like a stick form. You can rub it across there. Now I'm just going to polish as much of the back of this blade as I care to. Because that doesn't hurt it when you're uh, pairing. front edge of that chisel very shiny here looking very shiny now remember the thing that makes a blade sharp is those two very shiny surfaces mating together at a point so, that is why you bother to buff a blade after you've sharpened even up to very fine grits always buff and you'll find that uh that Last little buff makes it very sharp indeed. Alright, and we are done. So now we just get rid of our excess, and that's what uh, tracksuit pants are for, especially workshop tracksuit pants. You can see on the back, we've got a, a nice shine, polish. Just feeling that way on the blade, can't feel any burr. And likewise there. Just giving that a bit of a buff on the pants to get rid of, I can see uh, maybe a few streaks on that blade. Maybe it would pay to spend some more time. But overall, pretty shiny edge. Let's have a look, see how it goes for the old. Yep, it's shaving my arm quite effectively. Oh, I don't know if you can, Maybe I should uh, dull that a bit. But that is that is taking the hairs off. Yeah, the old paper test. Let's see how it goes on the paper test. It's hard to keep a chisel. Paper. Oh, there we go. It's 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 going to do pretty well. It's going to do pretty well. If you can do that with your hand sharpening and your hand buffing, go for it. But I I've, I've struggled to get stuff that sharp, so I'm very very happy with that that result. Anyway, enjoy. Ooh, bonus footage. Hand plane iron. Treat this exactly the same as the previous one. Looking across, making sure we're a little bit of pressure, but not too much. Shouldn't ever hear it. that sort of noise. Someone steady wins the race here. Again, that's going to be handy because the iron tends to throw it broader and wider. And I've got a lot of work to do on this one. So it's quite a uh, convex edge to it. Let's 
take quite a while to do. It is convenient though that they've made these wheels just slightly shy of the size of an iron. If that's intentional, it probably is. When, well, another good thing about this is the uh, the guard on the inside. So when you spill on the inside, it pushes the water back down the side into the reservoir, as opposed to the side of the reservoir, which does have quite a nice lip on it for catching extra water that runs off the edge. Just you go a bit far and it ends up on your wooden bench and you're like, no! That's why I've got this plastic sheet underneath. Mm. So much boredom in one video. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing how this compares to my hand sharpening. Oh, I reckon I'm about half the way there. <laughs> Oh, you have no idea how much fun this is. But to think about this machine in terms of cost towards, say, uh, the equivalent kind of best in breed, Tormek is probably one of the higher respected machines like this. And they, they go for 1200 to 1500 bucks in Australia. This is 400 500 bucks in Australia. Let's say 600 half the price or less of the cheapest Tormek price I've seen for the equivalent machine. And it does the same job. Does it do it as well? I reckon it does. You've seen the chisel do that. I do the same job on the Tormek I do on this one. Value for money, value proposition. glide or something on this so it slides a little more. It's kind of a bit frustrating. And it's not a problem to leave your blade like that. Even for a couple of seconds. Because it's, it's just going to do it on the same angle. Stuttering across with the blade, I'm able to do a nice smooth motion. 